So what's going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here, and man, this last ban list was rough. And Infernoble took a really big hit with the loss of Isold as basically one of its best starters. It's really tragic when a deck loses a card as significant as Isold. Infernoble, uh, just spoilers, is still able to play, but its ability to play around hand traps, through hand traps, and an ability to make boards is significantly weakened and a lot less consistent. Most combos require two plus cards, whereas previously just a single connector was more than enough to get you to everything that you needed. So deck building is, you know, still a work in progress, but the different engines and different things that you can play, that's where this video is going to be. That's what this video is going to be covering. We're going to be covering the different engines and the new ways to play Infernoble Knight post January 1st ban list. So basically 2024, when, once it becomes the, the new year, this is how you'll be forced to play Infernoble Knight. Small little caveats here. First thing, we still know nothing about the Flame Swordsman support coming out of Maze of Millennia. It might be decent Fire Warrior support at the very least, so it might be splashable with Infernoble as an engine. We might possibly get more, get more extenders, another potential boss monster. If the Gate Guardian supports anything to go off of, it might not work with Infernoble for some reason. Maybe it'll lock themselves into fusion monsters early on in their combos or something of that nature or whatever it is, but just be aware that this video comes with one big asterisk. Now that being said, this video is still well, well researched as to what different engines you can play. I saw a pack this morning uploaded a video with Super Heavy and Neospace Connector. I don't go too deep into the um, plays with these, but Super Heavy is a great way to start your combos. I don't think it's the best way. Also, Connector is still a good way to play around hand traps, but the issue is is that if you open Connector and you don't have Super Heavy or the Wanted Engine, it's kind of just a brick. So you kind of have to max out on Super Heavy and Wanted Engine if you want to play Connector in your builds now. Sublimation Knight, there's no Isold play, so now this should only be to get Turpin. And the reason why this is used to get Turpin is because while Turpin is, is uh, equipped, the equipped monster can be treated as a tuner and three plus the seven, which is Diabell Star equals 10. Um, you might want to increase Diabell Star to two. Obviously this, is, this isn't like an actual list. This is just my testing list. Uh, Battling Boxer Package is actually um, a lot more significant now. This is maybe the only one card combo left in the deck and it's not really the best one card combo either. There's also a spreadsheet that I want to show you guys. And the issue with the spreadsheet, the previous <laughs> Infernoble Knight spreadsheet for post Age of Overlord, is that 90% of these combos are now not possible because 90% of these combos went into Isold. There are only two potential combos that are still usable post ban list. And, you know, obviously it's not like, I can't really say for sure if this is going to keep the deck alive in the competitive format because in some ways I can see it still getting tops. In other ways, I can see why it may fold in longer tournaments because it may be harder to make your deck more versatile when you have to give up so much advantage to make your board, where you have to like play very risky to make your boards with uh, Infernoble now. Also, Angelic Ring is a lot harder to get. Uh, particular equip spells are a lot harder to get. So it's going to be very tough to like play the deck the way that you've been playing it for a while. But let's start to get into these combos. I'm gonna start with the ones from the spreadsheet that, that still work. So this is just using Ogier and uh, Oliver, I guess. So we're gonna get Ogier and Mill Turpin. We're gonna send Turpin for Oliver. We're gonna go into An Angelica. We're gonna search museum. We're gonna Ogier equip, or uh, Ogier attempt to equip. Angelica banishes her uh, herself, uh, summons out Roland, uh, we're going to Museum, A12, add All Mace, equip All Mace. That allows us to be able to extend into our Turpin. And then we're going to activate All Mace's on field effect. Go into Durandal, Durandal effect, search. And we're going to go into Charles. Charles is going to be equipped with Roland, and then we're going to immediately go into Emperor Charles. We're gonna use Museum's second effect, summon Charles from Extra Monster Zone, I mean from Spell Trap Zone. And then 
summon Renaud, add back to Gearfried, Synchro, the Renaud, and the Emperor Charles into Baron. Banish an equip spell, summon out Gearfried. Yeah, so we equip on Charles. I, I do think you should equip on Charles before you summon Gearfried, just so you can protect. Um, just so Gear Freakin has a, its negate live when it's summoned. But like by this point, they had plenty of chances to stop you at the beginning of your turn. There's no reason why they'd be activating a monster effect now. So we are ending on th three negates, uh, one Omni with Baron, one Spell and Trap with Charles, and then one monster effect negation with Gear Freed. On top of the quick effect pop with Charles, thanks to Roland in our graveyard. So that's like the first combo that still works. Uh, post ban list because it, it did not go into ESOLD at all. And th this doesn't seem bad, right? For two cards, for two very particular cards. The issue is is that although Ogier is going to be a 3 of from this point on, um, Oliver is a 1 of. So, this, it, although this this was, you know, doable before and still doable now, it, it's not something to rely on. Uh, it's going to, the, the combo routes for Infernoble post uh, January 1st are going to be a lot more inconsistent and harder to to telegraph beforehand you may have to like do a lot more reacting on the spot I instead of like trying to follow a, a spreadsheet it's going to be a lot more free form from this point on and that's the thing about Infernoble playing a deck like Infernoble you kind of like you always feel like there's more that you can do and oftentimes that does tend to be the case you may not always know the best route to go into so now this is a little bit more of a consistent combo, Ogier plus plus Renaud. So Ogier is going to mill Gearfried. We're going to summon Renaud, add back the Gearfried, go into Museum. Ogier is going to attempt to equip. Angelica is going to banish herself, mill Oliver. We're going to summon Roland, activate Museum, search All Mace. All Mace is going to equip, and then it's going to place Durandal. And then we're going to use Gearfried, banish to All Mace to summon itself. And because we have to Randall here, the um, spell, the monster to effect negate is live. Now we're gonna Oliver just to give ourselves an extra uh, equip, so we don't have to keep the Randall on the field. We do Randall for Turpin, and uh, there is a bit of a misplay here because when you summon Turpin from hand, it's supposed to be sent from grave. It's supposed to be banished when it leaves the field, so they don't banish it. So they kind of get one more. Uh, Charles than, than they should have, but you you do get the first Charles, and you could museum here. It's it's not going to do much though because you don't have anything else in grave to go into. Yeah, but Turpin Turpin is is supposed to be banished, so that's why this this shouldn't work normally. If you didn't use Oliver on your gear free, this could have been Oliver equipped to Charles and then. Um, Charles go into a second Emperor Charles, but be because uh, this person misplayed with the Turpin, that's kind of how things are going here. So here we have two spell trap negates, and I believe the pop is only one per, like once per turn per cop, like not like not per copy, just once per turn in general. Yeah, the the. Uh, the, the pop will, is still only once, so you get two negates, but you only get one pop, and that's about it. Oh, and, and a gear free negate. And potential follow-up, if if Museum stays on field, if Angelica gets targeted, if you choose to target um, Angelica with Captain Roland, then she can banish herself and uh, mill like a Magus, and then shuffle back like All Mace and, and Turpin, which is supposed to be banished, and like Ogier. So, um, oh shit, Magus is right here, <laughs> never mind. Uh, you can send Magus with, like, Gearfried, I guess. Um, but yeah, this, th this isn't bad. This isn't bad. Off of two cards, getting four interactions off of two cards, potentially five, if you get, if you get Angelica at, at the right time, is, is, is decent. But, um, it's definitely a step down from what we used to do. Uh, you'll, you'll come to find that the Angelic Ring on field is a lot less consistent. And that's really big because that was your play around Dark Ruler and around Super Poly. And now we're just more vulnerable to everything. We're more vulnerable to Droll, more vulnerable to Nib, and now we're more we're also more vulnerable to Board Breakers, um, su uh, Super Poly, Droplet, Dark Ruler. It's going to be a lot harder to play around 
a lot of cards like those because this we can't get angelic ring consistently we kind of have to hard open it or we have to get a, or we have to play certain engines to make it work so back to edo pro i want to show you guys some of the replays i've been working on today most of these are going to be one card combos um or one to two card combos i just have the other cards here just for like discards and stuff or just for like whatever i may need to discard for so now we have Uppercutter, and Uppercutter is kind of cool because it allows you to pivot between adding a Battling Boxer or a Counter Trap card. And you could add the Flame Bell Counter Trap, which uh, negates spells and traps during your opponent, you know, it, which is a Counter Trap that negates spells and traps. If you really want to be spicy, you could play the Battling Boxer Counter Trap and just leave your Dempsey on field, and, and then you have a Monster Negate as a Counter Trap, but that's, you know, that's personal preference, that's neither here nor there. But it's still like a really good starter because it can normal summon, it can add Spar, and then Spar can just summon itself as long as you control a Battling Boxer that's not once per turn, and you're going to see us abuse the fact that it's not once per turn. So we're going to King Dempsey. So on summon, he has the effect to add a level 4 lower Fire monster, fire Warrior monster from deck to hand, and then he, he also has a quick effect to detach one and stop Battling Boxers from being targeted with card effects this turn, meaning we can detach to Spar like frame 1. And then we can add a Renaud. Renaud can add back the Spar. And now Renaud's a tuner. Spar can summon itself out. And now we can go for Angelica. Angelica search museum. Museum activate, pay 12. And now we're gonna search all mace. Um, we kind of want to search all mace here because we don't have any of the names in our graveyard. Yet. Like we have not gone through any of the proper infer noble names yet. So. Now we're gonna Angelica, Mill, Ogier, summon Roland, we're gonna equip Ogier. Now we're gonna Warrior Lock ourselves to summon out the Ogier. Ogier's gonna mill Turpin. We're gonna summon Charos. Uh, Roland's gonna summon. Now we're gonna Emperor Charles the Great. Equip the Charles. Turpin summon. And you get to go for a SP Little Knight just to potentially stop something. But look at the difference, like, now, like, uh, okay, like, we're, we're, we're gonna go to end phase, we're gonna get Angelica back, and we just get two equips. I know it's like, you, you kind of want to keep, like, one zone open so that Roland can come back, so you, so you always have that quick effect pop, like, maybe you don't have to equip the one from deck. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's definitely, like, like, the uppercutter by itself is not the strongest setup. Um, but if it's by itself, then that means you're drawing mostly non-engine. There's no way that you're drawing this by itself and and you don't have like multiple hand traps or something. Because there's there's not a lot of cards that like kind of brick in this deck. There's um there's a lot of like engine that maybe you might not be able to use like immediately, but like as you get further into the combo, there are there are ways that you can like deviate um the line to make it more convenient, right? Like if he had a joy use, we would we would add spar back like more times, you know, maybe go into an IP before we warrior lock ourselves and stuff like that. So uh, just like it says in the spreadsheet, like every line in this deck, it's more like a guide than it is like an actual instructions. It's not like to give you everything. It's just to show you like what direction you should be going. So now I we're gonna start working with wanted poster by itself. And you know, this is why I just kept the discards in hand. Um, I was actually testing Ancient Gear before this. That's why, like, I just had all, all, all these extra cards in hand. I'm like, well, if I just need some of the discard, just in case, I'll just keep the extra shit in hand. But people will get the point. So we summon Diabell Star. So we go for Snake Eye. And then now we go for TG Rocket Salamander. And this is a little more, like, fringe. I could definitely understand if people don't want to play something like this. But this is a one card way into a level 5 synchro that doesn't use a normal summon that isn't super heavy. Super heavy is going to have more bricks. It's gonna take up more slots in your deck. Whereas Salamander, it's like wanted engine and then just two other monsters. Like it's it's not that big of a difference compared to super heavy. So it's it's less of a it's less of a commitment to play the TGs than it is to play um super heavy. But clearly there's no pendulum scale set up so it's gonna be harder to use like stuff like connector or but we went 
Angelica Museum Durandal, we use Durandal to add Uppercutter. And so notice we equip Durandal to Angelica with, without using Angelica's effect. So that way we can search Uppercutter. And now Uppercutter can get his effect. Search Spar. And just, you know, one thing about Spar, just to be careful, is um, you do skip your battle phase if you summon it using its summoning condition. Now there's two ways to play around that is either you summon it during main phase two or 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 if you're going first. Um, if you're going second, you may want to maybe stick with something like it evenly matched in your list just to play around more stuff. Just set up your board going into main phase two. That's that's another uh, option. But yes, uh, everything with counter punch does require you to skip ba skip battle phase basically. Uh, so if you're not going first, I don't recommend doing these, um, doing the uppercutter stuff. So it really all depends on how much you value your battle phase. So we, Renaud, we added back to Randall and we just uh, targeted uh, Angelica here. We could have added back Spar, Synchroed into Roland, but um, the, the issue with that is that Roland doesn't get us into triggering Angelica here. So we have to trigger the Angelica. So now we get Ogier. Now we museum, we warrior lock ourselves, and now Ogier's gonna melt Turpin. Going to Charles, Roland's gonna equip. Going to Charlemagne. Gonna some out to Turpin. Now we get the second Roland, and this is where it kind of gets important. Um, getting the second Roland is actually essential now for getting for getting Angelic Ring, right? Because we we actually resolve Roland first. So we mill Angelic Ring, then we get Gear Freed uh, to, from deck to hand, so we get pretty good follow-up. Um, also, the, the 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 draw off of um, the draw off of Wanted Poster was was an uppercutter because our deck is stacked. But it, you know, because uh, when you have it on Don't Shuffle mode, it's the the the, the deck is always stacked. So um, this isn't really supposed to be uppercutter, but you know, if it is uppercutter, cool. We we have follow-up, right? And then Charles can equip. Angelic Ring and Oliver. I really do wish that there was more that we could do with our monsters when you're Warrior Lock. Like, I could have made these two into an SP Little Knight. Um, I wish I could have turned them into an IP because IP with Angelica, I think, is like one of the best case scenarios. But yeah. Um, also, kind of sucks that there's no quick effect synchro on Roland because that would allow it to go into like a Baron or something. But Angelic is not the worst card to, to leave on field. It's just kind of tough sometimes, but we're not in the worst situation, right? We have one negate with Charles. We have Angelic ring negate. Uh, we have double imperm and we have um, once we cl once we clear a spell and trap zone, we also have a Roland pop. So all that plus to follow up in our hand, I don't think we're in a bad situation in this game. Right? So. That was just wanted poster using the TGs. And because this was basically just, we only lost one card in hand, really. Um, if anything, the search of Roland kind of made up for the card we lost. So we kind of lost no cards in hand, and then we set two. Um, by end phase... It's kind of like a really low commitment way to play Infernoble, and most other combos in this deck are like two card combos. So the fact that this is a one card combo and gets you two Angelic Ring. If we had one more extender, we could have po possibly made a Baron. We could have possibly made an IP before we were Warrior Locked, um, or even like an Apo. The, the TGs definitely have potential in the future of this deck. I just don't know. You know, I know it's like the one dollar secret rare that, that nobody wanted to pull out of. Age of Overlord, but after testing TG myself, I think this is a really solid uh, starter for the deck. Because because even on normal summon, it still gets you into Angelica, into Noble Arms Museum. It, it may not be the perfect setup, but it's still essentially like full combo if it happens to actually go off. So I think it's worth considering. If you want to minimize bricks, but still have a one card route, I think the TGs are worth considering. So now we're kind of going to mix the two. Now we're going to do wanted poster plus the battling boxer stuff just to start mixing and matching, seeing what we can do with two cards. Now that our one card combos are a little more, a little more limited. So now we go into Renaud. 
you know. Just like before, we go into the Dempsey Angelica combo. We go Museum, A12, All Mace. Now, yeah, we did kind of have to waste the All Mace to trigger Angelica here, but I think it was worth it. So now we're going to go for um, Diabelle Star. Uh, and we did send one of our Imperms. I know it's it's a little taboo to send a card you can actually use for Diabelle Star when we have like cards that can like equip themselves and summon themselves. But trust me, I think it's worth it. So we're going to original Simple Spoil, send the Diabelle Star. Now we go for Snake Eye Ash. And the reason why we're going for Ash here is having a level 1 body on field actually helps. And it gets to search Prod Monte. And this is a card you want to have in hand. You don't want to summon her off her own effect. I mean, off of Simple Spoils, you'd rather have Snake Eye Ash. And there's there's a really good reason, right? So Brad Monte, while you control a warrior, you can equip any equip spell from, from deck, right? Discard or target a warrior, control, equip any equip spell. So it's not necessarily a one card combo. Like you can't do this. If you control Snake Eye Ash, you can't Brad Monte drop from hand, equip a Durandal to Snake Eye Ash. But if you have any other warrior, this doesn't use your normal summon. So it's really convenient to like, uh, get a Durandal or whatever else you need from deck. If you already have access to all your Infernoble spells, then this could get you Angelic Ring. Uh, assuming that you know which piece you're going to keep on field until the end phase. So it, it's really good. Like, it's really viable in Infernoble now. The fact that it kind of, like, helps you play around Droll a little better. Cause, because playing around Droll now is going to be a lot harder. So the fact that it, like, equips from deck instead of adding is really significant. So now Brad Vante target the Dempsey. Now we're going to get Joyuse. Joyuse is going to add back Spar. And now we're going to go into Charles here. And the reason why we did it like that is now we are no longer warrior locked. If we um, if we try to summon out one of our um, monsters that is an uh, equip spell, right? So we're going to go Emperor Charles. We're going to summon out the Charles. So now we, we get to summon out Ogier without locking ourselves into warriors. And as you can see, I've kept the Snake Eye Ash on field. For a really good reason, right? So we equip Turpin uh, to any one of our monsters, really. Then we Snake Eye Ash to summon Oak. And then Oak can summon back the Brad Monte. And she's a level 1 tuner, so this actually works out really well for us. Now Oak is going to send Museum, because we already used Museum's second effect. So it's not even like a big deal if we send it to Grave now. And we get to summon out Flameberg Dragon. It's a little sad we can't go for like straight into Baron using these two because we have to send Oak on top of um on top of another card to summon out the Flameberg, so you can't go like one one eight. But uh I think we can do something that's just as significant. We can get there, just not as easily, right? So now we, we can go into High Lancelin. And the only reason why this card is is okay in the battling boxer build is because you can't use spar as a non-tuner when you synchro summon this card meaning that like it's like although this card is really great for digging our deck into like durandal and like um some of our noble arms uh we can't use it with it doesn't mix well with the battling boxer engine so we won't be able to summon this card as much which will kind of conflict because Equipping a Noble Arms is nice, but like sometimes it does. It's kind of like insignificant. It's like not what it, it, it's not what we need to survive the turn. So Durandal goes off, and now we can go for Ricardo. So we're gonna link off our Flameberg and our Dempsey because we don't need Dempsey anymore. Let's be real. Into IP. Flameberg's gonna summon back two tuners. Turpin's going to get to summon itself back because, you know, we, we still control the Charles. And now that allows us to go into Roland. Roland's going to get us into our Angelic Ring during end phase. There we go into Baron. Um, and now it's like we're kind of in a great situation because we're going to have the Angelic Ring. We're going to have um, IP. We're going to have two non, you know, because uh, Angelic is going to come back. We're going to have two monsters that we can mix with IP, pivot between um, SP Little Knight or like an Appaloosa. Well, Appaloosa was in my extra deck at the time, but yeah. 
Uh, yes, and we, we were coping on the X Saber Wayne because there were times where I was like, maybe this is actually going to be useful. Um, and I haven't found a useful situation for it yet, but I feel like I will find useful situations for X Saber Wayne as time goes goes along with this deck, especially if you're on Neospace Connector. I I really think like you should be considering this card. As as funny as it sounds, because this 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 card's oldest dirt, and we haven't seen it played in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh for the longest time, but. Now it might actually be useful <laughs> now that Esold's gone. So yeah, uh, just to reiterate, uh, so IP Masquerina that can pivot between Apo and SP Little Knight, Baron Negate, Charles Negate, Angelic Ring Negate, uh, Charles Pop, and then two more Imperms. There's either six or seven disruptions when you mix Battling Boxer with the Wanted package. So that's actually really good. So now I want to mix Wanted with Museum. And this is going to be a little weaker, it's not going to be as strong. By not having one card access into a particular engine, it doesn't... It makes it harder for us to... get the full value out of our cards, but... This is what I was speaking about earlier, right? So, um, we, we went Diabell Star, we used Museum Search Durandal, we, we added Sublimation Knight, and then Sublimation Knight was allowed to get us into Turpin. And then, um, because... Turpin was equipped to Sublimation Knight, we're able to sink Sublimation and Diabell Star into Baron. We go Simple Spoils. And the reason why we send Museum here is because we, we weren't going to use Museum Second Effect anyway. Uh, we were going to equip Turpin, then send Turpin, and then we're going to Synchro into, into Angelica and add another Museum without being able to equip the Turpin anyway. So it's better to just keep the Turpin in Graveyard, get the second Museum, and just play off the second one. So now we're gonna Ricardo, and now we're Warrior Locked as well, right? So again, it really makes no difference. We add Museum, Museum pay 12, and we go All Mace. We're gonna Turpin uh, trigger the a Angelica. Okay, go Roland, we're gonna mill the Gear Freed. So we're gonna Turpin summon. We're gonna go into Charles, we're gonna All Mace, add back the Gear Freed. We're gonna Roland equip. We go Charles, get the gear freed, and yeah, um, mu museum applying its effect twice is great, but it doesn't actually save you from the fact that you you won't be able to play around Super Poly with this hand. Like, it's it's great that we have more negates now that help us play, um, that still make our boards threatening. And, you know, Charles being, like, 4k attack while you control Museum is, like, you know, a, a fucking godsend. But it, it doesn't solve all the problems with the deck. We do still have follow-up here. Because we do still have, like, Ricardo in, in a grave. Alright. Now we get into a little more spicier territory. Madrot is... If you're an old-school Noble Knight player, you know this guy by heart. You know what he does. You know what his whole flow is. And this probably won't surprise you that it's actually a decent starter with Infernoble, but it needs two cards to start because it needs the Noble Arms. And that's <laughs> the problem with regular Noble Knight is that they all are way too reliant on Noble Arms. Now, that might not even be a bad thing now because we have like Heritage, we have Noble Arms Museum, and we're going to be maxing out on Durandal from this point on. I don't think there's a reason not to. So... Madrot could be consistent. I'm even seeing some people on, on Camelot, the new Gnome Knight Field Spell that came out of the tins. And that card is decently, is like surprisingly not that bad. In like, it, it, it actually does let you get Noble Arms from like anywhere, from like deck or graveyard. So it, it's actually not that bad. And it, it doesn't act require you to pay life points to do it either. It just doesn't give you any like extenders or anything. So we can drop, pop our Durandal, summon uh, Ogier, and now this doesn't really interact with Durandal at all. Durandal won't be able to search, and it won't get its uh, second effect either. It'll just be sent to Graveyard, which is actually what we want, right? Uh, Madrop being able to do its thing, summon a Noble Knight without actually wasting our Durandal. So that's actually cool. So we can activate Durandal again after this. So we Ogier, Mil Turpin, Dempsey, add Renaud, Renaud's gonna add back Durandal. We're gonna go Durandal, 
And we're going to add Spar just because it's the easiest thing to add. There aren't enough level 4 warrior monsters that summon themselves at this point in time. So we kind of got to do what we got to do. Get to Spar. Go into Angelica. Angelica Search. Going to go into Museum. Museum Search. Going to get the Joy Use. We're going to Turpin Equip uh, to trigger the Angelica. And the reason why you want to Turpin Equip rather than Ogier Equip for this is because um, if you Turpin Equip here... Uh, that can use up the Turpin equip, and then later on you can Ogier equip then summon back the Turpin. But if you use the Ogier equip, then when you're trying to summon back Turpin, you may need another equip monster, and you won't have one. So it's always better to use a Turpin equip on Angelica than it is to use the Ogier equip, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, Mill Gear Free, summon Roland, Ogier equip, Turpin summon. Now we're going to IP Mask Arena, right? We're, we're not locked into Warrior yet. We didn't summon out our um, Ogier. We we very well could have um, went Joy Use to get back to Gear Feed already, but uh, that's you know that's neither here nor there. We're in a museum. Summon back Ogier. Charles, roll and equip. Emperor Charles. We're gonna equip. Get the Joy Use. Gear Free. Banish. And then we basically have uh, SP Little Knight, Spell Trap Negate, Monster Negate, and uh, Emperor Pop. So that's what? Two banishes, three, four, five, plus two Imperm. So that's seven interruption. Well, assuming the two Imperm is, is actually something is significant, right? Because. Like, that's like two out of the five cards in your hand. Just have to be like hand traps or like disruptions or something. And, you know, that's very possible considering how much like space you have for non engine in a deck like Infernoble. I don't know if you have that as much space for non engine now. You know, you might only have like one hand trap, but that's still better than nothing. Um, yeah. So IP for SP, and boom. You guys get the point. So now this is going to be the final uh, replay. And I want to show you guys a little something of what Infernoble can do. I think the combos for this are... There's way bigger of a spread spread of uh, combos that you get once you start implementing the Super Heavy Samurai. Because Super Heavy Samurai can pivot between summoning Angelica, summoning Baron, summoning Dempsey. There's a lot of ways Super Heavy Samurai can start your turn. I also should say that... Um, when you're playing the Super Heavy Samurai Engine, you should not activate Wanted Poster in the standby phase. You should wait. Uh, because Wanted is a quick play spell anyway, so if they droll you, you can chain the Wanted to the droll and still get and still get the search. So when you're playing Super Heavy, do not activate Wanted in the standby phase. Just, just keep that in mind. So we go Connector first here, right? Because we want to snipe out any hand traps in, in their hand, right? As I said, Connector is great with the super heavy package because now even though we use our normal summon we still have plenty of plays because we're going to set up a pendulum scale and now we we even get hand knowledge um initially i was gonna just have the sublimation knight discard and you know fucking but then i realized oh wait there's no opponent here so i was like fuck it right just ju just pretend sublimation knight isn't actually here even though now that it's in our hand it, it is going to put in work but just pretend the sublimation knight isn't here so we're going to go bike, bike, Wakashi, Wakashi summon itself. Go into Big Bang K, Big Bang K at Soul Horns, Soul Horns at uh, Equip. Go into Angelica. And cool thing, uh, because if they have the Ash, w w Wakashi can chain block it, so you, you get them Museum. If they have the Imperm, Angelica's second effect will trigger, or they'll be doing the work for you if, if they have the Imperm. So. Uh, the Super Heavy Samurai package is already a little like we ha we now we have two layers of protection because now we just saw their hand and we just uh, got a chain block on the um, on the Angelica. So Museum and Durandal, Durandal's gonna search uh, Ogier, and now there's nothing else to do except Pendulum Summon, right? So Ogier sub. Now, it's only because that um, we, we have Sublimation Knight that we were able to also get Gear Freed. 
If you only had Ogier here, you would just mill the Turpin. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna go Dempsey. Dempsey's gonna detach. He's gonna add Renard. And you see, I used the Sublimation Knight for IP. So, you know, it's like that very well could have been uh, Aqua Dolphin because Aqua Dolphin's kind of just gonna sit here. Uh, we're gonna special out Renaud because we do still control Angelica. And Renaud's gonna be able to be able to add back our Gear Freed. Turpin's gonna be able to summon itself. Or it, to be able to o o equip itself. And then we're gonna trigger Angelica, summon out Roland. Then we're gonna Ogier equip, the Turpin summon, Synchro into Charles. Then we're gonna Magus. Uh, and now because we control Emperor Charles, we get to summon Magus for free. We go into Roland. And then Magus is going to get us uh, another chain link. So it, it, do, it is stack the deck, right? Because we just shuffled back Turpin with Magus and then it draws a card. So Turpin gets stacked on top of the deck when it can't be shuffled. But it shouldn't be Turpin. It should be anything except Turpin. Uh, we get to turn our extra monsters into Appaloosa. Well, I guess the Aqua Dolphin did come in. Um, but is what it is, right? We take those, right? The whole thing about Infernoble is that, like, of course the deck will do better the more, you know, Fire Warriors that you open, the more that you can do. So just take this with a... Just take this as, like, a life lesson. Like, you know, the more that you want to do with this deck, the more you kind of just got to commit more monsters on field. Um... So, because we summon the second Roland again, we get to mill Angelic Ring, um, and then uh, Emperor Charles the Great gets to equip the Angelic Ring from Grave, equip one from deck, and then we get to bring back the Princess of Noble Arms. And now, off of three cards, we have uh, three, four, five, six, six negates, plus a pop, plus follow-up in hand. So, yes. And we got to play through at least two hand traps there, or we got to at least see their hand and know what we were up against. So it's it's very imperative that you, that if you want to play the Super Baby Samurai package, it's very high risk, high reward. It's like the, the TG stuff is less risky, but you don't get the same level of protection against hand traps and disruptions that you would get if you were playing the Super Heavy package, um, uh, uh, especially with Connector. You could, in theory, if you open Connector, if you choose not to play the Super Heavy, but you open Connector and you open, like, let's say, Oliver, or you open the Wanted uh, package, then you could just Special Summon a level 1 Fire Tuner, um, and then Normal Summon Connector go into uh, Aqua Dolphin, or I guess vice versa. You would Normal Summon Connector first, go into Dolphin, and then you'd Wanted Poster Summon out the level 1 Fire Tuner. I don't know how important it is to people that you guys keep um, Connector in your list, also, if you have a way to, you can also loop, um, you can summon Aqua Dolphin twice now, because if you send Aqua Dolphin to Graveyard for like a Link Summon or something, let's say, Connector contribute itself and summon back the Neospatian Aqua Dolphin from the Graveyard, so you can rip two cards out of hand instead of just one. So, it's really personal preference as to how you would like to play this deck now, and I, I can see for sure why super heavy is the strongest out of all these variants but i don't think it's going to be the most consistent and i, I guess that's going to be up to you guys like what do you guys think about um infernoble uh <laughs> i wasn't even going to make this video today but i was like fuck this man list was so impactful and i just started really learning how to play infernoble like properly um before i, I kind of just like winged it like now i'm learning how to play properly and really trying to figure out like what the routes are now that um, one of our most significant cards has been. That was more of like a test hand than a combo, if anything. But now you can see why my deck size is so large. Uh, not because this is what I expect to play, but rather just because I don't know which engine I, I prefer, and I guess I'm going to leave that to the hands of, of, of you people. I'd be really generally surprised. I know, well, uh, these these TG synchros don't work. Don't, don't look at those. But everything else, I'd be really surprised if people still top of this deck. It's really tough you're really gonna have to lab more now that you know a lot of this stuff is gone and you're gonna have to like be willing to like try more things like uh there is even people talking about power tool with revolution synchron i didn't go into anything with that because i just 
I don't know. I I don't really have faith in the in opening a in always opening a level four non tuner, you know. And it's like if I do, then you know, I don't know. Also, there's people playing with the adventure engine again, kind of like in a adventure synchron kind of way where you turn your level seven plus your rev synchron into a baron, and then you turn the adventure token plus the rev synchron revive back from grave into angelica and then you kind of have a negate before you get to go into your plays and you play around right of air mysterious activation condition where you can't use normal monster effects that turn because revelation synchron is is going to be your normal summon yeah but the only issue with that is that it doesn't give you a lot of um versatility as to how you can build your deck uh forcing yourself to play an adventure engine takes up a lot of slots even if you're not sacrificing potential non-engine slots that can significantly weaken your opening hands when you're not drawing ex extenders but rather you're drawing more of the same engine you're drawing multiple rights multiple water enchantresses or whatever the case may be so you just got to be careful with that i really did like the snake eye stuff i'm be honest i just wish it had like a stronger thing to go into you could leave flameberg on your field like if you want to go ip then leave flameberg on field and then Flamebird kind of like summon back like Snake Eye Ash or like Flamebird can summon back any monster from your graveyard basically during your opponent's turn if you set it up during your turn, right? Because he's he places it in spawn trap zone and then during your opponent's turn he gets to summon it back out. Maybe if you want to like mill Gear Freed early on in the turn and instead of using a uh, Joy Use or like Almay's second effect on it, you can place in the spawn trap zone with like Flamebird then Flameberg summoned it out during during your opponent's turn and assuming that you have like a, a Emperor Charles its uh, negation effect will be live as long as you have any equip spell and even if you don't you have Roland that can equip to it from Grave so you kind of like get to set up with it pretty pretty well so I do like the Snake Eye stuff I like the way that Noble Knight Majorot starts to combo I kind of like Uppercut or starting combo I like it better if you open Wanda poster with it and I also like the way TG uh, starts starts the uh, Infernoble combo. So hopefully you guys got something from this. Even like post Phantom Nightmare, there's not much that changes for us. Like I know that this format isn't going to last long, but Inferno players are still going to need a sort of like basic guide for what to do going into some of those sets. Like Pr Promethean Princess isn't going to do much for us because we need three monsters to make her in the first place. What three monsters are those going to be? You know, Snake Eye Populous is great. You know, having that extra level one on the field is great, but it only gets us into a wanted poster. It doesn't actually get us into the Infernoble engine. So it's like, what is that going to do for the deck that like the deck can't already do itself? And then it's like another searcher. It's like, do we really want to play deeper into Droll? Do we want to want do we really want to like force ourselves to play cross out and stuff like that? I don't know. So we'll just have to find out. But uh, that's been about all for now. This has been your boy, Nistro here, signing out.